Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Leaf and Barrel. If you're new here, Leaf and Barrel is a segment I do on my channel where on the barrel portion, the first portion, we taste a whiskey, do a little bit of a whiskey review. And then over on my second channel, we do the second half, which is the leaf portion, where we then review a cigar, pair the cigar with the whiskey and see how the two mingle, see how they play, see how they work together. On this week's Leaf and Barrel, we have a damn fine Kentucky bourbon. We have Old Forester 1910 Old Fine Whiskey. <laughs> Forrester 1910 Old Fine Whiskey. This is the fourth installment, fourth and final installment of the Whiskey Row series that Old Forrester has been doing over the past several years. It started out 1870 original batch, then they had an 1897 bottle and bond, then the 1920 prohibition style, and now finally this last installment, 1910 Old Fine Whiskey. I love this series, so let's just say that before I go into my little rant here. I've had all of them but the bottle and bond, I love them all, but Old Forester, what in the hell? The 1870 was 90 proof. Then the second one out was the 1897, that was the bottle and bond. 100 proof, a little higher proof. We're going in the right direction. We're moving in chronological order, raising in proof as we go. Then we have the 1920, everybody's favorite, coming at a robust 115 proof. It's got a little hair on it, it's good. Now we jump back chronologically from 1920 back to 1910 and we drop down to 93 proof. What the actual is going on? Why did you jump? Why did you go the same direction and up in proof every time and then all of a sudden jump back and lower your proof? Everybody, from what I understood, really thought this one was gonna be barrel proof. I think you missed a big opportunity there. Could have done a 1940 or whatever and made a good stout cask strength whiskey and that would have been a hit. I feel like you missed a little bit of an opportunity there, folks, with Old Forester. I know you're not watching this, so I don't know why I'm directing this to Old Forester, but nevertheless, I feel like there's a little bit of a missed opportunity there to not do a cask strength because that stuff is so popular. And I think that would have been really great. I would have loved to seen what they could have done with one of these at cask strength. I just had to get that ran out of the way before I got started because I just thought that was really weird. Nevertheless, I really, really love this stuff. So let's crack into it. Let's get the bottle open. Enough gibbering without some pouring. Eh. Mediocre, mediocre bottle pop. If you've watched this series before, I'm gonna have to, I pour a little easy. I film these in batches. So I film three and four of these at a time. Three is about my limit, especially if I'm drinking high proof whiskeys, because by the fourth one, I've got a little bit of a buzz going. I'm tired, I'm over it. I'm not <laughs> to record anymore. Jeremy, what's with the sissy pour? That, that's why, because I can't get tanked. You'll, I'll be slurring by the end. 1910 Old Fied Whiskey. Now the story, real quick, while we let this open up for a minute, the story behind this whiskey is in 1910, apparently there was some kind of fire on the bottling line. They had a bunch of this dumped out of the barrels into a big vat ready to be bottled up. The fire happened and they couldn't bottle it. So rather than let it spoil, they re-barreled this back in new charred oak barrels, which supposedly was one of the first double barreled whiskeys out there, which created this unique flavor profile this one's got. I will say another double barreled whiskey and made by the same parent company, Brown Foreman, Woodford Reserve has doubled oak, which if you've watched this channel ever, you'll know one of my favorite whiskeys out there. I love that stuff. It's like maple pancakes, reminds me of breakfast and it is delicious. And from the comments I've read in the videos, most of you guys really like it too. So that's a really great whiskey. This is a similar process. The difference is with Woodford, the second barreling, they do a, I think they call it a heavily charred, lightly toasted barrel on the second barreling. This one they're calling like an aggressive, they just go medieval on the barrel. Like supposedly they burn and char that barrel to the point to where it almost won't hold water anymore. Well, not water, it almost won't hold whiskey, it almost leaks. They really char the shit out of that barrel. So it gives it a very unique flavor. The barreling proof of the second barreling is at an 100 proof, which with that heavily charred barrel is bringing out some of the sweeter sugars in the oak and dissolving all that into the whiskey and making it this lovely thing that it is. Let's get a few of the nose notes now that it's had a second here. Definitely get a little bit of that wood, that oak. There's definitely some caramels in there. I get like a, it was like a dark fruit or maybe like a raisin kind of, kind of thing. It kind of, you know what it kind of reminds me of actually? because it's kind of like a raisin mixed with like a grain flavor. It kind of reminds me if you stuck your nose in a box of Raisin Bran. If you have Raisin Bran, if you ever had it, go get some, stick your nose in the box of it. 
That's kind of what it reminds me of. Then you're also getting some of your stereotypical bourbon notes. I'm getting a little bit of the apple, a little bit of vanilla, maybe even a little bit of leather or some tobacco. There's like a little bit of a funky note in there that I can't really put my finger on. Very sweet, dark fruit, stuff smells delicious. It's, by the way, I have not mentioned, but this stuff is dark. I mean, for a 93 proof, and they don't have an age statement on here. The only thing I have that's darker than this, I think, is I have some Garrison Brothers from Texas, and that shit is like black coffee. It is so dark. But this, for the proof and whatnot, extremely dark. Has a really nice color to it. Let's get our first sip. I usually do little cuts here. I do a lot of swishing, especially when I'm tasting whiskey. I really like to move it around in my mouth a lot. And the mic probably picks that up, and I don't want you to listen to a bunch of... <laughs> so you'll see little cuts in there. Uh, now I've talked and I missed all the notes, so hold on. Definitely some caramel, some vanilla, very sweet up front. Caramel, vanilla. I think I get a little bit of that raisin that I smelled on the nose. Definitely some like cinnamon spiciness. Really, really nice, sweet up front. Longer it sits, you definitely get some of that oak. A little bit of graham cracker maybe? There's like a cinnamon bready kind of thing going on. I think I'm getting like some walnuts or some nuts of some nature. Let's get another one. By the way, mouthfeel on this stuff, 93 proof, ridiculous. This stuff is as like thick and velvety and viscous as like a much higher proof, much, much higher proof uh, whiskey. Yep, oak, caramel, vanilla, very stereotypical bourbon flavors. But with that like cereal raisin kind of thing, and then the longer it sits, the oak kind of comes back around it's cinnamon. It's almost kind of like a graham cracker kind of thing. Maybe that's part of that raisin bran vibe I was telling you. Maybe it's like a raisin bread kind of flavor that I'm tasting. And this might sound weird, but I'm almost getting like a sweet pipe tobacco. If you've ever smoked a pipe, I don't know if you've ever had, there's a tobacco that I like to smoke a lot when I smoke a pipe called Lane BCA. And I'm kind of getting the Lane BCA kind of smell taste. You know, some of these flavors, when I say them, it's weird because you might say a flavor that you get that isn't really a flavor, like leather. Nobody knows what the hell leather tastes like. At least I don't. I don't chew on leather. <laughs> but when somebody says they get a leather note, it's kind of tastes like leather smells, if that makes any sense. Medium finish. It's got a good finish holds in there for a good amount of time. I've heard some people say they get a lot of chocolate in this. I found that if you let this one open up a little bit, it does kind of get some sweeter flavors. You get some of these chocolatey notes and stuff that uh, people are talking about. I think this stuff's delicious. I don't know that I would say it's better than 1920. 1920 is a pretty phenomenal whiskey. At 115 proof for around 65 bucks, it's a really good value. This one, by the way, I picked up for about, I think it's about 60 bucks, usually like 58, 59, 60 bucks. There's been some back and forth I've seen. Some people really like it. Some people aren't too crazy about it. And you know, to each their own, not everybody loves the same thing, but. I think this stands up really close with the 1920. Depending on my mood and what I'm doing, I could really see it going either way, uh, whether or not I pick up the 1910 or the 1920. Really smooth. I hate to use the word smooth, but it's kind of a cool little experience because on the front, when you first hit your mouth, it's very viscous and sweet, and you get those caramels and the, that kind of dark fruit raisin kind of situation. And then you swallow, you get a little bit of that Kentucky hug in the back. You might get a little bit of pepper or that cinnamon tingle. You get that bready note with the cinnamon and stuff I talked about. And it really does some cool transitions. After a little while, you get a little bit of that pipe tobacco that I mentioned. Some of those darker flavors, it might be a little bit of a coffee. Lots of cool things going on in this one. I don't always get a ton of different notes and stuff. So when I'm getting this many different flavors, there's definitely a lot going on in the glass. I really think this is a great whiskey. Uh, I'm excited to pair this in the next video. I think it's going to be awesome. One of the things that you guys asked, uh, a couple of people had commented and said, could I rate the whiskeys and stuff just to kind of give you guys a point of reference. I thought about doing like a hundred point scale. Uh, I've seen a lot of people do it. I think what I might actually do just to keep it simple though, and I think it kind of um, relays the message of how I feel about a whiskey as good or better because it keeps it simple. And I don't have to like show you a complex scoring system out of a hundred and all this is, I think I'm going to take a page out of the bourbon junkies by the way, another great channel. I'll link them. I'll link all the channels that I mentioned down below. These are all whiskey channels that I follow and I watch pretty regularly, but I'm gonna take a page out of their book and I'm just gonna give it like a, a, a B, C, D, E, F, like you get in school. I think that relays the message very well, gives you a good idea of how I feel about it without getting overly complicated. Cause you know, I was keeping the hundred score point thing and it's, 
that just makes shit more hard than it needs to be. I try to keep things fairly cut and dry on this channel. Old Forester 1910, old fine whiskey, really good stuff. I'm gonna give this an A minus. The only reason I deduct a little bit and didn't give it an A or A plus is I think the price, mm, for, for that price range at that proof, it's not a fantastic value. It's really good, I think it's a good value, but it's not a fantastic value, so I had to bump off just a little bit for that. All right, guys, so that wraps up this week's barrel portion of Leaf and Barrel. As always, if you are interested in uh, cigars, we will be pairing this whiskey with a cigar over on my second channel, so at the end of this, I will link that video if you care to check it out. If you're not into that kind of thing, I totally get it, we will part ways here. I hope you guys did enjoy just hanging out and sipping a little whiskey for a little while. If you did, feel free to smash that like button, that always helps us out. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so, we'd love to have you on board. I hope everyone is having a fantastic week. Keep sipping that whiskey, we will see you in the next episode is good, is real good. You should definitely go get it, for sure. I gotta stop drinking this shit, or we're gonna be in bad shape. I gotta pour more to drink with a cigar. Sweet baby Jesus.